gentlemen, and welcome to the Double RT Boxing Show. It is the week of 5 1 21. So, we're going to do our nice weekend predictions right here on the Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A. Let's talk that boxing. I'm ready. You're ready. Let's get into it. Starting out a little earlier, I know we said Saturday, but we're going to start with Friday, the 30th of April. Can Sonny Edwards come on down? And defeat Maruti. Is he catching him at the right time? Is he catching a 38 year old? That's what that's that's what the only thing you can bank on. That's what everyone's talking about. Can the young man, was it 23, 25, can he capture the 38 year old at the right time? Um he has he has the youth. Maybe he has the hand speed, maybe he has the quicker feet. Uh Maruti, he, he does tend to lean over his feet sometimes with his reach. Maybe Sonny could catch him. Maru- I don't think Sonny could bully him in the inside. Uh, even though Maruti has a longer reach, I think he's a in- pretty decent inside fighter. I'm going to go with the champ to defeat Sonny on this one because I-, I-, I just... I... I- as much as Sonny looks pretty decent right now, I think he's an arm puncher. You know, if he does have a chance to win, it might be in the back half, maybe the age and the and, uh, absence of the ring might come into a cardio factor for Maruti. Maybe he might fade, get lose a couple rounds and lose a split decision. That's the only way I could see it happening, Sonny Edwards. Gas tank out the outweighs them, but I'm going to go with a uh, Rudy uh, winning big on a. Uh, I think he's going to pull away. Like I said, I think Sonny Edwards with his punches and his counters and all that other stuff, he's like he's what you see a lot of times. Just ah, that's when they make the sound effect. I think he, I think he's an arm puncher. I don't think he turns his hips with all his uh, quickness punching. And then the uh, cold main event, I believe is. Uh, Colin taking on Baluta. I'm going with uh, Michael, number one, defeating the number nine, Baluta. Michael Collin, uh, not really still still in that uh, very domestic European level. Again, he is the WBO Intercontinental title. So, you know he's coming at the champion. Again, the Intercontinental belt. You know, Mr. A loves it. it. It gives you that. It gives you that title track. You know, Collins holding on to it. You just heard um, in the news, Lyndon Arthur, he's made number one for Joe Smith. Uh, coming up is Liam Smith taking on Magnumoff. They got an intercontinent. So it goes, track the belt, people. I'm telling you. If you're a boxing junkie, track the intercontinental, and that's who you're going to find out eventually who's the champ's going to fight. So again, on this 30th card, I got Milani's. Um, I'm he's gonna defeat Edwards. I got Colin. I don't think uh, Baluta's body is gonna be able to withstand Colin's body attack. And we're gonna move on to Saturday, May first. Uh, was a lot, and a lot of good fights are happening. A lot of mixed fights, I should say, but also um, a few. A few small fights like that could lead to other things. For instance, Chris Eubank Jr. coming back against Marcus Morrison should win that fight. You know, considering he's over here talking Golovkin, Canelo, and you know anyone else at 160 champions, you should defeat Marcus Morrison then. But like I said, this fight, depending on how much punishment he takes. How quick he could get him out. What fashion he could get him out. He. Triple G and Ramada. And uh, Ramoda Are looking for that showdown at the end of the year. Can one of them squeeze a fight in between? Can one of them land Chris Eubank Jr. For that good fight in between. So this is interesting to see what Eubank discuss here. Uh, then after that we got Craig Richards. And Demetrius Beevil. Hmm. Interesting. I like Craig. Uh, first discovered him on the show with uh, 
I didn't think Frank was going to beat him. I picked Craig to win that fight, and uh, he lost me on that one. Is he catching Bevo at the right time, the layoff, the hand speed, the reach? I think it's going to be tougher than people realize. I think uh, Bivu's championship pedigree is going to come in and win the, win the back half of the fight. Maybe a, maybe a 8 4, 7 5, Demetrius Bivu. You know, Demetrius Bivu, he's smart enough to not to, not to take a risk. If, if, if he's winning, he's just going to coast it out and, and take the points towards the end. Then you got uh, Katie Taylor and Natasha Jonas. I want to say Jonas because I think she has the body punching power to slow Katie Taylor down. She's going to have to do that because I, I said a long time ago when I first started covering her, she reminds me of Errol Spence, a female version the way she carries herself in the ring, the way she moves, her body attack. She's there for the jab. But if she comes in behind a strong jab and a body attack, it's going to be a tough night for Katie. It's hard for me just to say Katie's going to lose. I'm going to have to see it. You know, I picked I picked against Katie enough. So maybe the time I do pick her, she loses. But, hey, I'm going to go with uh, Katie pulls out a tough one. Uh, split decision, 115-113, Katie Taylor. Uh, then we're going to go with Derek Chisora and Joseph Parker. I got Derek Chisora on this one. Coming in with... Um, the new coach, uh, I can't think of Buddy McGirt. If Buddy McGirt can give Derek Chisora that jab that he gave Kovalev, you know, the jet just to behind a jab, I think Derek Chisora can land enough shots where Parker is going to have to be on the back foot or a volume won't be enough. I don't see, I always, th- I said it. Every time I talked about Joseph Parker on this channel, he's him, is it, him and Sonny Edwards are in the same boat to me. They're very slappy punchers. I, I, I don't see them delivering power with the shots. Maybe earlier in, in Joseph Parker's career, he was a heavy hitter, but who isn't in the earlier career? And then we, uh, I think there was a saying the coach said he had like two surgeries on his elbows for his bone spurs. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe he's a slapper now. I just don't see Joseph Parker doing enough to keep Derek Chisora off him. He's going to have to move because Usyk moved well and gave good shots. And he rocked Derek Chisora a few times. Now, he didn't he didn't take the chance. Like, I don't know how I'm saying Bivu's not going to take the chance. Usyk didn't take the chance. But I don't think Parker's going to have that movement to get those angles, to get those shots. Um, possible, possible. But I'm going with Derek Chisora on that one. I just don't know if it's going to be a stoppage or not, but I just don't think Park. I think Parker is not going to have enough to keep him off. And coming in behind a, a Buddy McGirt jab, I think he's going to be pumping that jab out. It's going to be enough to keep Parker up in the high guard, trying to block it, and then just... You know, eat punches up while he's in the high guard. I don't I don't see Parker doing counter punching, punching in between uh Chisora like White did. I I, I don't I don't see that. And I, like I said, I, I don't think he's gonna have the movement to last that fight. So I, I got Chizora, Bivol, um, Katie, and Eubank. Going on to the Fox card. Again, small fight. You know, there's been rumors of Deontay Wilder coming against Carlos Negron on pay-per-view. People say, what the hell is that? But who is fighting in the eight-rounder on this card? Carlos Negron. It's kind of interesting. Why is he fighting? Why are they slipping him in? Is he even ranked anywhere? Carlos Negron... How high is he ranked? Because it'd be very interesting if this guy's in the WBC. Is he? Is he ranked in the WBC high enough? And we shall see right here on the Double RT Boxing Show. Just as I thought, he's not ranked in the WBC. So they slid him 
and an eight rounder so he could win and they could slide his ass on in to like number 14 or 10. And Deontay Wilder is gonna fight his ass at a comeback fight. Cause right now he's not ranked at all. Carlos Negron is not ranked at all. But during this eight round fight, just like they did Yard after his loss to Kovalev, put it as an eight round fight in Spain somewhere, got his ass ranked again. Carlos Negron is about to get ranked in the WBC after this victory. Let's just watch that and see where that goes. Right, folks? Let's see where that goes. Now, moving on to that card. You have uh, Omar. You got Granados coming back. But, yeah, who cares about these guys? Omar Figueroa and Abu Ramos. I got, I, I don't think Abu Ramos is going to beat him. Um, Figueroa is starting to look... Uh, his punch shield is starting to look like it's wearing out. Abu Ramos seems like just... He maybe he learned something in that loss to Ugas, you know, how how to do something else, a plan A, a plan B. I don't know what the hell Figueroa has besides just being in front of you, punching, taking punches, and trying to outwork you. Um, Aries Landy Lara and Thomas Lamada. Uh, I'm a little. You know, as as these fighters start to get up in age, and you always it's always you always wonder when's that one young buck gonna upset the old lion, you know? And this is definitely that fight that has it written on it. Thomas Lamada could definitely he has the height, the youth is on his side, the reach is about the same. You know, is Laura is he going to pressure him like her? Is he going to do what her does? Just walk him down. You know, because Laura can start off strong. He's going to fade against the pressure. Is he going to fade against the pressure? The pressure bust pipes. Or is Laura going to make a diamond out of this? I'm going to go with uh, Aries Landelara pulling this one off. But I think a lot, maybe a lot of people might question the performance. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But you know what? I'm a fanboy. I'm going to knock out. Here's name that I was going to knock this motherfucker out. But it's, that's the fanboy of me speaking. Then you got Sebastian Fondora. I like Sebastian a lot. I like and Jorge Coda. Looks very one-dimensional. Fondora takes a lot of shots. I'm going to upset on this one. Uh, very easily. I could be, be easily wrong on this one. I could actually see Sebastian just beating the shit out of Jorge because... Jorge just there to get hit. But um I think this is gonna be just one of the times where Sebastian just takes one too many hits. This is gonna be the fight where it just does not work. Damn Jorge caught us 33. I did not know oh, man. 30 though, 30 victories, 27 knockouts. Cause he he fought a pretty good fight against, but he 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 took it straight to Gallimore. But Gallimore didn't do shit. You know, Gallimore was it was just all wrong. Cause Gallimore was kind of a hard hitter, but he. Oh man, Coda. I go with Fondora, but it's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna. Be, I I change. It. I go with Fondora. For a minute, I thought Cotto might just upset the apple card and just shock it and knock him out, but that 80-inch reach on a 33-year-old, I think it's just going to get him. And then we got Andy Ruiz and Chris Ariola. the pay-per-view main event. Again, I am very happy this fight is on pay-per-view. I'm not going to order it, but it's time we see these fighters get what they're truly worth. Coming off a loss... You at your worst. Everyone's disappointed in you. In the ring with a fight you should win. Um, let's see what let's see what the fans really think you're worth. Same thing with uh, Wilder and, and Negron. If that's really true, I hope that shit is on pay per view. Let's see what Wilder's really worth. Get him on pay per view with Carlos Negron. I'm gonna go with Andy Ruiz uh, by stoppage. I don't know how much it's gonna be. 
you know, a, a big improvement. Everyone's talking about weight loss, but you got to remember, it's easy to lose a lot of weight when you're coming in looking like shit. You know, I, I've been hearing this this whole career of Andy Ruiz. Oh, I, I found this. I done this. Now, the fact that he's in the camp with Canelo and other winners, it's a little believable this time. But is he going to do more than enough? Because Andy always does just enough to me. He 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 caught he he caught AJ on the temple, you know, and enough is history. Besides that, he does just enough. I need to see more, but I don't think Chris Chris, Chris Ariola is going to be the proper uh, fight to show me more. So I got him stopping. I got him stopping Chris Ariola. Again, I'm happy as hell that fight is on pay-per-view. I'm not buying it, but the fighter is going to make what he's really worth. The fans are going to show him what he thinks. I'm very interested to see what that pay-per-view does. Again, if all those rumors are somewhat true, Fox is cutting out on the deal, CBS is picking them up, whatever, Showtime, whatever. With these type of fights on pay-per-view, where whether it's Fox getting a new deal, whether it's CBS, whether it's Showtime, you want these shitty pay-per-views so that way these fighters can stop bitching about what they're worth. You know... At your shittiest, you brung in this, you know. You know exactly what they're worth now. It, it's, it's, you could base it all on them, not a good dance partner. Oh, so and so brung in this, I brung in that. You know, Mikey Garcia and Earl Spence, who brung in what, who brung in this, you know what? Andy Ruiz, you're fighting Chris Ariola. Deontay Wilder, you might fight Carlos Negron. Ain't no way in hell Carlos Negroni bringing shit on pay-per-view and Chris Ariola ain't bringing shit on pay-per-view. The Double RT Boxing Show. This is the Weekend Picks. Tune in to see what we did right and wrong. Thank you for your time and support.